praises and worship. We will decide to every day live for him. Hallelujah. What to say, Lord, is you gave me life and I can't explain just how much you mean to me now. You have saved me, Lord. Give all that I am to you every day. I can be a light that shines your name. And we'll live every day. Every day, Lord, I learn to stand up on your word. And I pray that I might come to know you more. You would guide me in every single step I take that. to the world every day is you I live for every day I'll follow after you every day I'll walk with you my Lord every day to the world every day it's you i live for every day i'll follow after you every day i'll walk with you my love we sing every day every day it's you i live for every day i'll follow after you every day i'll walk you I live for every day. Come on, church. Sing it with me. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. Only you. It's you I live for every day. It's you I You I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. It's you I live for every day. Every day, it's you.
Father God. You're the only one. You're the only thing, Lord God, that we need and want in our lives. God, and help us, Lord God, to decide every single day to choose you, to follow you, and obey you, Lord God, and to be more like you. Lord God, open our eyes, open our hearts and our mind to be more like you, to expand the limitations that we have, Lord God, so that we could be more of what you of what you plan and dream for us. And we just give you all the glory and honor and praises with our lives. In Jesus' name. And we say amen. 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 Magandang gabi, Regions Family. Happy Wednesday po sa ating lahat. And welcome po sa ating midweek service. So ako po ay nagagalak na makasama nyo sa gabing ito. Ako nga po pala si Sister Charlene Absede. And if this is your first time watching, kindly tell us in the chat. Ngayon po ay last Wednesday na po ng month of November. Ilang araw na lang, December na. At ilang araw na lang po, Pasko na naman. So excited na po ba tayo? At ito din po, last topic na po ng ating series na Expanding into New Things. Ano nga ulit yung big idea nitong series na to? For many, this season truly marks the beginning of a new chapter in life. One that will bring growth but also means the end of another. You have dreamt about these new things, even prayed about it, but the thought of what needs to be left behind has hindered you from moving. Now is the time for death to come to the old, and the reason for staying is gone. Sabi mo sa sarili mo, the reason for staying is gone. The end means the beginning of a new season. So, last topic na po itong araw na to. At nung mga nakaraang Sundays, pinag-usapan po natin yung the beginning of a new season, the beginning of a new self, the beginning of a new heart, and the beginning of a new chapter. And every Wednesday po, meron tayong Bible characters na pinag-uusapan, kagaya na lang ni Abraham, ni Moses, ni Caleb, at ni Nehemiah. At ngayon pong gabing ito, meron na naman po tayong panibagong Bible character na pag-uusapan. So it's all about expanding into new things. The end means the beginning of a new season. So tonight's message is about an opportunity and a response. Opportunity and a response. And if you are ready sa salita ng Diyos, sa mensahe ng Diyos sa gabing ito, prepare your Bibles, your notebooks, and your ball pens, and let's get started. So kindly open your Bibles in Luke chapter 5. At babasahin po natin yung first 11, cha 11 verses itong chapter na ito. Luke chapter 5 verses 1 to 11. So babasahin ko po siya sa New International Version. So kung nandiyan na po kayo, samahan niyo po akong basahin ang salita ng Diyos sa gabing ito. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him. And listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belong, belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Verse 6, When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Verse 8, When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. 
for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. Verse 10, And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything, and followed him. May the Lord bless his word. Tayo po muna manalangin sa gabing ito. Panginoon, maraming maraming salamat, O God, sa gabing ito. Sa another opportunity, Lord, na matututo muli sa paanan mo, matututo muli sa salita mo, Panginoon. Dalangin ko, kumilos ka sa buhay ng bawat isa sa amin, O God. Let there be transformation at this time as the reading of your word, as we study your word this evening, O God. Lord, have your way. Nasaan man po kami sa mga oras na to, ano man po yung ginagawa namin, I hope and I pray, Lord, na ito on namin yung atensyon namin sa iyo, sa salita mo, sa katotohanan ng yung salita, Panginoon. Let us treasure this time, O oh God, as we seek you, as we learn from you this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, ang title po ng mensahe natin sa gabing ito ay Don't Lose the Opportunity. Don't Lose the Opportunity. The Story of Peter's Calling. So, ang Bible character na pag-uusapan natin ay si Peter, si Apostle Peter. Tonight, we will be talking about Apostle Peter, the story of his calling from being a fisherman to fisher of men. Are we ready to learn again from the Lord? Are we excited? I hope you are all expectant. Our hearts are expectant sa sasabihin ng Diyos sa gabing ito sa atin. So, verse 1, balikan po natin ulit yung verse 1. Sabi doon, One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. So yung Lake Gennesaret po, or the Sea of Galilee, is sometimes called the, the Sea of Tiberias. So by the first century, the Sea of Galilee had been renamed sa Lake of Gennesaret or Sea of Gennesaret. It is a large fresh water lake over 690 feet below sea level making it the lowest body of fresh water on earth so it serves as the main source of water and commerce for the galilee region the sea of galilee was home to a thriving fishing industry so kung nasa pilipinas ka para siyang navotas diba fishing capital of the philippines Many momentous events in the life of Jesus took place around the Sea of Galilee. Halimbawa na lang po dito yung pagkatawag ni Jesus sa kanyang mga disipulo ay nangyari po doon sa Sea of Galilee. Jesus calming the violent storm. Jesus walks on the surface of the Sea of Galilee. The feeding of the 4,000 na mababasa natin sa Matthew chapter 15 and also the feeding of the 5,000 sa Luke chapter 9. Jesus also taught the crowds by the shore and preached while standing on a boat sa Sea of Galilee, which we read sa text natin kanina. So, mababasa natin dun sa verse 1, the people were crowding around him. So, the large crowd showed the increasing popularity of Jesus as a teacher. Jesus had become the most famous preacher in Israel at that time. He was performing incredible signs and wonders. Crowds followed him kahit saan man siya pumunta. At nabasa rin po natin, the people were crowding around him, listening to the word of God. What makes each of the gospel stories accounts unique? Ano ba yung pagkakaiba ng mga gospel book natin sa Bible? They all have unique Features and emphasis on Jesus. For example, the Gospel of Matthew, it focuses on Jesus as the King of the Jews and the fulfillment of the Messianic prophecies. Sa book of, or sa Gospel of Mark naman po, Jesus is the perfect Messiah, came to save the world from its transgressions. But He is also the submissive and suffering servant. The Gospel of John focuses on Jesus as the Son of God, the Word at the beginning. 
at ang Gospel Luke kung saan po ga- galing ang ating text sa gabing ito focuses on Jesus as the Savior of all people. It is all about Jesus as the Son of God and the Son of Man. So listening to the Word of God tells us that the crowd is not just listening to a man who preached the Word of God. They are listening to the Word of God. John chapter 1 verses 1 said verses 1 to 2 says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was with God in the beginning they are listening to the word of God preach the word of God they are listening to Jesus they are listening to the savior of all people they are listening to the son of God and the son of man and let's proceed dun sa Following verses, verses 2 to 3, He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. So, sabi ko nga kanina, the crowd was so big. The crowd was so big that Jesus got into one of the boats. And then taught the multitudes from the boat. Kinailangan niyang sumakay sa bangka. This is one of the many strange pulpits in which Christ preached. A mountainside, a boat, a bowl full of water for washing feet, a casket, and the strangest of all, the cross. These are some examples of the strange puppets in which Christ preached about the kingdom of God, about the gospel. Lahat gagawin niya to get the word out. To get the word out. The boat becomes or became a platform for teaching. The boat became a platform for teaching. Our Lord Jesus saw two boats at the time and got into one of them belonging to Simon Peter. Since si Pedro po ang pag-uusapan natin sa gamig ito, let's have a little refresher. Sino nga ba si Peter? Who was Peter in the Bible? So Peter was originally from Bethsaida and lived in Capernaum, both cities on the coast of the Sea of Galilee. So isa po siyang fisherman. Siya, si Peter, si James, and John were partners in a profitable fishing business. So Simon met Jesus through his brother, Andrew, who had followed Jesus after hearing John the Baptist proclaim that he is the Lamb of God. Mababasa natin sa John chapter 1. Andrew immediately went to find his brother, Peter, to bring him to Jesus. Upon meeting, Jesus gave Peter, or Jesus gave Simon, Simon is his first name, Jesus gave Simon a new name, Cephas in Aramaic, or Peter in Greek, which means rock. Later, Jesus officially called Peter to follow him, producing a miraculous catch of fish, which we will be talking about later on. Peter was one of the first followers, or first disciples of Jesus Christ. He was one of the closest friends, an apostle, and a pillar of the church. Si Pedro po ay enthusiastic, strong-willed, and impulsive. But for all of his strengths, Peter had several failings in his life. Halimbawa na lang po dito, it was Peter who took Jesus aside to rebuke him for speaking of his death and got corrected by the Lord. Basahin po natin yung Matthew chapter 16, verses 22 to 23. Peter took him aside And began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. It was Peter who drew his sword and attacked the servant of the high priest. He cut off his right ear. Mababasa natin sa John chapter 18. It was Peter who boasted that he would never forsake the Lord even if everyone else did. And later, alam naman natin ang nangyari, he denied the Lord 
three times. Mababasa natin sa Matthew chapter 26. The Lord knew Peter's shortcomings, Peter's weaknesses. He knew he would have his failing moments. But still, pinili niya po si Pedro. Still, the Lord who chose Peter continued to mold him into exactly who he intended Peter to be. Paulit-ulit po nating narinig, Jesus does not call the qualified, rather, He qualifies the called. Calling the unqualified has always been God's specialty. God's specialty. Let us go back to our text this evening. Now, let us talk about the story of Peter's calling. As I said a while ago, we will be talking about an opportunity and a response. So, let's have our first point for tonight. Our first point is an opportunity to collaborate. An opportunity to collaborate. Basahin po ulit natin yung verses 2 to 3. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. So, the fishermen were washing their nets, meaning to say they were finishing up. Tapos sa sila, having fish all night, they were drying and mending their nets for another night's work. Makikita natin sa verse 3, dun sa binasa natin, na hindi po nagpaalam si Jesus kung pwede siyang, kung pwede niyang gamitin yung bangka. Basta na lang po siya sumakay dun sa bangka. No conversation, no lease agreement, no rental agreement. The only conversation that he had with the owner is, was when he asked him to put out a little from the shore. Ano po ang ginawa ni Peter? Ano po ginawa ng owner nung bangkang iyon? He allowed Jesus. He allowed Jesus to use his boat. He gave him a push. He gave him a push. So Peter knew Jesus. He definitely, he, he definitely knew that Jesus or what Jesus was doing is important. Hindi niya ipinagdamot yung meron siya. Hindi niya ipinagdamot yung bangka niya kay Jesus. He didn't make an excuse that they were already finishing up. Bangka niya yun. Yun yung ginagamit niya to earn a living. Importante po ang bangka sa mga mangingisda. Di ba kung meron kang bagay na ginagamit mo sa pangkabuhayan mo, talaga namang iingatan mo yun. Kung pwede nga lang na hindi mo ito ipahiram, e gagawin mo. Kasi nga, di ba, pwede kapag ipinahiram mo ito sa iba, e eh, masira nila. Hindi na nila maibalik, mapabayaan nila. Kasi yun yung ginagamit mo to earn a living sa mga pangangailangan mo sa araw-araw. Pwedeng business yan, business establishment, facilities, o kahit mga gamit katulad ng cellphone, computer, camera. Pwede din yung oras mo o yung panahon mo. Pero nabasa po natin, Peter let the Lord use his boat. No complaints, no arguments, no excuses. He even gave Jesus a push. So there were two boats. Paulit ulit ko pong sinasabi, there were two boats on the shore. If Peter had said no, take note of this, Jesus would have gotten to the other one. But Peter will lose an opportunity. An opportunity to collaborate with the Lord. Why Peter? Because he has a boat. And why the boat? Because he needs to get the word out. To get the, the gospel out. Jesus used the boat as a platform where he would preach. Kinailangan niya yung bangka. Kasi nga sa sobrang dami ng tao, marami, marami ng tao ang hindi nakakakita sa kanya. Jesus is described as having a loud voice. So, hindi po problema na hindi siya naririnig ng ibang tao. Dito makikita natin, gusto ng Panginoon na makita din siya ng mga tao. Kaya ginamit niya po yung bangka as platform. Kinailangan niya pong humanap ng platform at yun nga po yung bangka. Here, the boat represents our life, our possessions, our weaknesses, our strengths, our struggles, our frustrations, our testimonies, our hearts, our time, 
our skills and talents. Can God use your boat? Maraming beses na ginagamit ng kaawa yung mga bangka natin to give us excuses why we don't offer God what we have. Mga excuses katulad ng my boat's not big as his, my boat is dirty, my boat is not good enough, my boat is not as good as his. But now God is telling us right now that He wants to use our boat. He wants to use your boat, kapatid. He doesn't have to use us. He chooses to use us. Church, we need to get the word out. We need to get the gospel out in the world. How are we going to get it out? We need to let God use our boats. We need to give God our boats. So the question is, can God use your boat? Can God use the gifts that He gave you? Can God use your life, your time, your possessions, your business, your heart, your testimonies, your heartaches? Can He use it for His glory? Can He use it to get the word out? Are we willing to collaborate with the Lord to get the word out, to get the gospel out? Are we willing to seize the opportunity to work with God, to be used by God? It was God's boat in the first place. It was God's boat in the beginning. If Peter had said no, he would have gotten to the other boat. Jesus would have gotten to the other boat. But he will miss the opportunity, the wonderful opportunity to be used by God. A wonderful opportunity for something greater. You'll never know what God will do until you let Him on your boat. Until you let Him use your boat. And now let us look at the outcome of Peter's response in allowing God to use His boat. Let's go to our second point this evening. Our second point, from a place of frustration to a place of blessing. From a place of frustration to a place of blessing. Basahin po natin ulit yung verses 4 to 7. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat, to help and to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. So after Jesus had finished teaching, he wanted to do something good for Peter, for Simon, who had lent him the use of the boat. We cannot give something to Jesus without Jesus giving us or giving even more back to us. So Jesus said to Peter, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Peter answered him this way, But Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets for a catch. We can see here that in the earlier verses, diba, they were already finishing up. Nililinis na nila yung kanilang mga nets. And now we can see na Jesus wanted Peter to let down the nets to go to the deep water. To fish again. Diba? Tapos na nga sila. Tapos sasabihin ni Jesus. Sige pa. Try again. And as a fisherman, this is a frustrating and disappointing scenario. Because they fish all night with nothing to show for their labor. No catch at all. They work hard all night. Pero wala silang nahuli. Kahit isa. They all must be exhausted and downcast at that moment. You know, Jesus wanted Peter to try again. And this time po, si Jesus na yung nagsabi kung saan banda niya ihuhulog yung lambat. Jesus directs Peter where he will lower his nets for a catch. Normally, the fish that were netted in shallow water at night would migrate during the daylight to waters too deep to reach easily with nets. Which is why Peter fish at night. Kasi po, mas madali pong mangisda sa gabi. 
Peter no doubt thought Jesus' instruction made no sense. We see here, once again, that Peter didn't struggle. He just allowed the Lord. Peter understood that he probably knew more about fishing than a carpenter did. Kasi po carpenter si Jesus. And he had worked hard, worked hard all night without any results. Alam ni Peter na sa oras na iyon, imposibleng makakuha sila ng isda. At alam niya din na magdabag na silang na, nangingisda, wala silang nakuha. So, pwede malamang sa malamang na wala pa rin silang makuha at that time. Pwede na lang siyang magdahilan kay Jesus. He could come up with a lot of possible excuses such as, I am too tired because I work hard all night and haven't caught anything. I know a lot more about fishing than you do who is a carpenter. The best time to fish is at night, not during daytime. Our nets are now clean and ready to be stored away. So instead of making such excuses, here's Peter's response. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Sinabi niya pa, master. So master, the particular ancient Greek word Luke used for master is epistata. This word means commander, chief, leader, or perhaps even boss. So with this title, Peter showed that he was willing to take orders from Jesus. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Because Jesus says so, I will do it. Even if it seems out of the blue, even if it seems odd, even if it means sacrificing my time and money. Because Jesus says so, I will do it. When was the last time po na nasabi mo ito sa sarili mo? Nasabi mo ito sa Panginoon? When was the last time na nilit go mo talaga yung pride mo, yung pagiging complacent mo, yung pagiging stubborn at indifferent mo for the sake of obeying what the Lord has instructed you to do? Because Jesus says so, I will do it. This was Peter's statement of faith and trust in his word. He had fished all night, and the sea might be as well like a desert. But Peter didn't refuse. His expectations may have been very low at that time, but he was at least willing to obey Jesus. Hindi siya naging excuse maker who would turn around and go home. Having done, take note of this, having done his human best, at the thing he was best at, Peter's nets were empty. Doon siya magaling, fisherman siya. So ginawa niya na lahat ng kaya niya. Peter's nets were empty. Plus, he was exhausted having work all night. Jesus determined that the best time to call Peter was when he was at his weakest. Jesus, or just when you thought it was nothing, God says, I am not yet done. Just when you're about to quit, God says, it's not over yet, my child. God has a habit of turning situations around, kapatid. He was a way maker. He is a way maker, a miracle working God. Just when you thought it was over, God said, wait, there's more. The place of your Next blessing will often be the place of your greatest frustration. Ulitin ko po yun. The place of your next blessing will often be the place of your greatest frustration. Sometimes, God needs us at our lowest points, at the place of our frustrations, to reveal His greatest glory, to see ourselves as people who, apart from apart from God, can, cannot do anything. Peter needed to know who rules the fish, who fills the nets. Then he would fish, or he would be able to fish in faith. Sabi nga po sa verse 6, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. Then unexpectedly, 
Unexpectedly, the nets became so heavy, really heavy. When Peter dropped the nets, Jesus filled them. It was a very powerful moment. From having nothing to a large number of fish that break their nets. One word from Jesus and their biggest problem was breaking nets. Kanina yung problem nila, wala silang kuha, wala silang, ano, wala silang nakuhang isda. Ngayon, their biggest problem was breaking nets. At the word of Jesus, they were made to prosper. This is a blessing that cannot be achieved on their own strength. She says, oh, when Jesus directs our work, it makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. So, nangyari ito sa buhay ni Pedro dahil naging willing siya na mag-obey dun sa orders, dun sa instruction ni Jesus Christ. Hindi siya naging excuse maker, pero naging person of obedience siya. And there's always blessing in obedience. You will never know where your obedience to God can take you. We can see here, this verse natin, they only got the blessing after they obeyed. The blessing will follow obedience. It will not precede it. Only after obedience that the evidence is manifest. Tell somebody today, there's a blessing in obedience. Sabihin mo sa kapamilya mo ngayon, nakasama mo nanonood, there's blessing in obedience. Peter was such an experienced fisherman. Talagang professional siya, yun talagang alam niya, dun siya skilled. And because he knew how unfavorable the conditions were, he knew all the more what a great miracle this was. Alam niya, ito ay miracle. Imposible yung mangyari to, pero nangyari. At may effects po yung miracle na yon sa buhay nila. Una, connected blessings. Connected blessings. Verse 7, ang sabi dito, So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Because of the remarkable catch of fish, sobrang dami, Peter needed the help of his partners, his fellow fishermen. They came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Because of your faith and obedience to the Lord and to his word, the Lord will bless you so much that the other people will get blessed as well. Madadamay sa blessing na ibibigay sa iyo ni Lord ang buong pamilya mo at ang ibang tao. We are blessed to be a blessing to other people. Who among you here wants that truth in your life? Amen? Amen. Sabi nga 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, And God is able to bless you abundantly, abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Blessed to be a blessing. Ano pa? Ano pa bang effect ang nangyari? An awareness of sinfulness. Verse 8, sabi dito, When Simon Peter saw this, saw the miracle, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. Peter, overwhelmed with conviction, said these words to Jesus. As I said a while ago, his expectations may have been very low at the time. Pwedeng merong hint of unbelief din sa puso niya. Hindi siya naging greedy. Nakita natin hindi naging greedy si Peter after nung makita niya yung amount nung isda. Hindi siya naging desperate na makuha o angkinin yung mga huli na para sa kanya lang. Ano ang ginawa ni Peter? He fell at Jesus' knees. He was overwhelmed with conviction. His sin of unbelief was exposed. The remarkable catch of fish was clearly a miracle. Peter immediately realized he was in the presence of the Holy One, exercising his divine power, and he was stricken with shame over his own sin. So yun yung naramdaman ni Pedro. God's holiness and presence reminded us of our own unworthiness, which deserve judgment. 
When Peter saw the great power of Jesus, it made Peter realize his own spiritual bankruptcy compared to Jesus. Na realize ni Peter, I don't deserve this. This is too much. I don't deserve any of this for I am unworthy. I am a sinful man. But Jesus said him, said to him, ito po yung sabi ni Jesus kay Peter, do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Peter experienced fear in the presence of Jesus. Because a sin in the presence of a holy power produces fear. In the grammar of ancient Greek, yung word don't be afraid literally means stop being fearful. It calms an existing fear. Peter was afraid of Jesus. He was holding him in such great honor and awe. But Jesus told him to put away that fear. Sabihin mo sa sarili mo, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Jesus overcomes fear. Jesus overcomes fear. Sabi nga sa 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fears. Jesus wants to relate to us on the principle of love, not on the principle of fear. Instead of fear, let us find courage in following our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10 says, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. Papangatlong effect po ng miracle ay a redirection of attention. Jesus is turning a miracle catch of fish into a parable about catching people for the kingdom of God. Don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch or you will fish for people. Jesus is redirecting Peter's focus from the miracle catch of fish to himself, to his purpose and calling for Peter. The greatest blessing that God gave Peter was never the fish or the miraculous amount of fish in his boat. It was faith, a connection to the great provider himself. Yun po yung greatest blessing ni Pedro. Peter knew Jesus was extraordinary before Jesus filled Peter's fishing nets to the breaking point. He had already been introduced kay Jesus sa pamamagitan ng kanyang kapatid na si Andrew. So here, makikita natin, Peter was already struggling with the call of Jesus in his life. Peter must have felt unqualified. Hindi ako qualified kasi fisherman lang ako, wala akong kaalam-alam. He must have felt unqualified to be Jesus' disciple. Having no formal theological tra training, the one thing Peter knew was to fish, or so he thought. Here, Jesus is teaching Peter, and not just Peter, including us then, the most important fishing lesson. Jesus is telling us that the greatest blessing that we have is not the fish, but a relationship, a connection with Him. That apart from Him, apart from God, we are nothing. We could do nothing. That's why we need Him. We need our Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus tells us to fish, kapag sinabihan niya tayong mangisda, we must not place our faith in our own expertise or yung kung wala man tayong expertise, our experiences or the current level of our faith. At His word, let's just faithfully go out and let down our nets. Pagkatiwalaan natin ang ating Diyos, napupunuin niya ang ating mga lambat, our nets. So it's a cool thing po when God becomes your partner. Amen ba doon? When God becomes your partner, it's a great thing when you have God on your boat. It's a great thing when you don't have to fish alone. Kaya nga sabi po sa Matthew, Chapter 28, verses 19 to 20, the Great Commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
We don't have to fish alone dahil kasama po natin ang ating Diyos sa ating bangka. And for our last point, point number three, a call to live everything to follow Jesus. A call to live everything to follow Jesus. Sabi po sa verse 11, So they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything, and followed him. After witnessing this great miracle and hearing the invitation of Jesus, they all decided to leave everything and follow him. Peter and his friends, so hindi lang po si Peter, marami ang nadamay. Peter and his friends gave up everything they had of value. The comfort of their homes, their status in the community, and a familiar place to sleep at night. They have given up everything they had to follow Jesus. They left their boats, their nets, and the sea, which is their main source of living. For they all recognize who was the one calling them. They realize that what's in front of them is so much greater than what they have. They left iniwa nila yung miraculous catch of fish. They left it behind because it was not as important as what it showed to them about Jesus Christ. Nakita nila mas importante itong taong ito na nasa harapan ko. They left what they had just been blessed. Yun nga yung miraculous amount of fish. For a greater blessing that was ahead. Nakita nila there's a greater blessing that is ahead. Because of our Lord Jesus Christ. They've learned at that moment that everything that, that they have is a result of their obedience to God, to His Word. If I follow Jesus, favor will come. If I follow Jesus, grace will come into my life. I don't want the fish. I want the giver of the fish. I don't want the fish. I want the giver of the favor, the giver of the grace. That's why you can have it all, Lord. All I want is to follow you. All I need is to be near you always. If you have Jesus in your life, you have all, you have all that you need. Amen ba doon? Naniniwala po ba tayo doon? If you have Jesus in your life, you have all that you need. And once you truly understand this truth, saying yes to His call, saying yes to Him will never be a difficult thing to do. Leaving everything behind for Jesus will never be a hard thing to do. Kaya naman, church, here's the question. Are you having a hard time following Jesus? Are you having second thoughts sa pagsabing, Yes, Lord, here I am. Use me. Are you reluctant to fish for men, to fish for people, whether because of fear or having a spirit of unbelief? May this story of Peter's calling and Jesus and the empty nets filled strengthen your faith to fish. We need to see ourselves as people who apart from God can do nothing. That's why we need Jesus. Jesus sees us as He intends us to be. So don't look down on yourself. Wag mong sabihin, hindi mo kaya, kapatid. Wag mong sabihin, hanggang dito na lang ikaw. He uses unlikely heroes like Peter, like Abraham, like Moses, like Peter, a fisherman from Galilee. But Jesus called him a fisher of men. A fisher of men. Because Peter was willing to leave all that he had to follow Jesus, God used him in great ways, in mighty ways, in extraordinary things. And I am telling you right now, God wants to use you too. Gusto ka rin gamitin ng Diyos. Agaya ng ginawa niya kay Peter. Peter didn't know that this would be the beginning of an incredible chapter in his life. Ang akala niya lang, 
is going to loan Jesus his boat for an hour. He didn't know that he was about to expand into new things. You can never know where God can take you. You can never know where your obedience can lead you. Simon Peter, from being a fisher, a fisherman to a fisher of men. From being part of the crowd to being part of the crew of Jesus. The crew of Jesus. And now, just like what happened to Peter, the Lord is telling us right now, I see you out there in the crowd. I see you, my child. Would you be interested in stepping out of the crowd and being part of my crew? Can I use your boat? God is telling us that right now. The crowd just takes the word. They just listen. But the crew gets the word out. The crew gets the word out. Are we willing to do that? To do what we have to do? To live what we need to live? To experience a touch from God? Can God use your boat? Will you entrust your boat to our Lord Jesus Christ? Your life, your time, your resources, your skills, your abilities. Can He use it to get the gospel out in this world? I will repeat what I said a while ago. There were two boats on the shore at that time. If Peter had said no, Jesus would have gotten to the other one. If Peter had said no, he would lose an opportunity, an opportunity to collaborate with the Lord, an opportunity to be used by God, to witness the great power of the Lord, an opportunity for greater things. Marami tayo ngayong oras na to na nakikinig listening to the same message. And God is asking us individually, one by one, person by person, My child, can I use your boat? Can I use your boat? I hope our answer for tonight is, Yes, Lord, you can use my boat. You can use my life, my time, my resources, every part of me. Because I don't want to lose this wonderful opportunity. To experience your touch, to experience your move, to experience your miracle in my life. So here I am, Lord. Here's my boat. So tonight, I hope marami tayong natutunan sa mensahe ng Diyos sa gabi ito. And I pray that right now, whatever is hindering you, ano man yung pumipigil sa iyo, sa pagsabing, yes, Lord. Let us lay it all down at the feet of Jesus. Offer it sa paanan ng Panginoon. And allow God to move in your life. Let us all pray. And let us all pray na we will not lose this wonderful opportunity to be used by God. To experience His touch, to experience His great power in our lives. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we worship you, we exalt your name at this time. Lord, maraming maraming salamat sa mensahe ibigay mo sa amin about opportunity of being used by you, of working with you, of collaborating with you, Lord, to get the word out. Lord, here's our boat. Here's our life. Here we are right now. Lord, nasabihan na kami na we are not good enough na hanggang dito na lang kami. But Lord, Iba yung tingin mo sa ame, Tinawag mo kaming worthy, Lord. A holy nation, royal priesthood, Panginoon, tinawag mo kami. And right now, have your way. Hipuin mo bawat puso sa gabing ito, Panginoon, sa mga taong nag-struggle, O oh God, na sumagot sa panawagan mo, Panginoon. Lord, I pray. Touch their hearts. Right now, Lord, nakikita mo ang bawat isa sa amin, Panginoon. Lord, ayaw namin maging bystander lang, Panginoon. Ayaw namin na maging audience lang, na maging part lang ng crowd. Lord, gusto namin maging part ng crew mo who gets the word out. Because we need to get the word out. We need to get the gospel out in this world. And we want to be used by you. Use our boats. 
have your way. Freely move in our lives right now. Help us to see yung mga bagay na in-instore mo para sa amin. Help us to see that new thing that you want to happen in our lives. Help us to expand into new things, Lord. Maraming maraming salamat. Have your way. Thank you, Lord, for meeting us right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pakikinig sa mensahe ng Diyos sa gabing ito, sa pagsama niyo sa amin ngayong midweek service. Kita-kita po tayo sa darating na Sabado at sa darating na linggo po ang ating 38th anniversary celebration. Kita-kits po dito sa Regions of Christ. God bless po.